Hi guys, welcome back for another cyber safety conversation in partnership with Team Mobile. I'm Sydney Zeiker, I'm the Safe Community Program Manager here, and today we're gonna to talk about learning in a virtual world. Um, all of these topics each month are around some kind of cyber safety related information. And moving all, all of our learning to a virtual format has opened up new ways for cyberbullying in particular. What's interesting about students learning online is that when a student is learning from their home, from their device at home, they've now kind of invited their entire class, including their teachers and their peers, or maybe even people that they don't normally get along with into their home. This causes a few different things. First of all, learning from home, students tend to be a bit more comfortable than in the classroom. They may act or say or do things um, that they might not do at school because they feel like, oh, I'm at home. I'm in the comfort of my own home. When we've kind of talked to educators about this scenario and some things that have occurred because of this, what we've seen has, or what we've heard from these educators is that there's a lot of bullying that occurs in chats. Um, with teachers now teaching both in person and virtually, it's a lot for them to be paying attention to what's going on in the classroom, to be able to you know, create a safe learning environment in the classroom and also online. When students are online, they have the opportunity to send private chats back and forth. So if, we're, if your student's learning on Zoom, for example, they could put something in the chat where everyone could see, including the teacher, or they could send a pointed message directly to one other student in the classroom. We've seen situations where students make fun of one another for the way that their home looks, for the way their surroundings are. Um, and we've even seen quite an increase of death threats. Teachers have told us that when they pull chats at the end of the day, they can pull information about what was said in private chats. And there are plenty of messages every single day that say, hey, you should go die. Hey, you should kill yourself. That is called suicide baiting. And suicide baiting is punishable by law. It's important for us to remember that in the state of Texas, a student can be charged with a crime starting at the age of 10. Now, what do we do? What do we do as parents and community members? We need to continue having conversations about what is appropriate to say to somebody, how should you treat other people and how should other people treat you? We also need to believe our students if they tell us that they're being bullied online. When it comes to cyberbullying, it can be something that's hard to detect. It can be something that a student might not be willing to come up to you, their parent, and say, hey, I'm being cyberbullied, or they might not even know what to say. So we need to look at, for changes in behaviors. Um, how are they eating? How are they sleeping? How are they interacting with you? Is it different than it has been for the months previous? We also need to talk about behavioral expectations. In a classroom, in a, in a traditional classroom, the teacher is there to overhear what's going on, to interact with students, to step in if they see treatment that's unfair or unkind or even unsafe. With the online component, that's much harder for them to do. I know we're all busy. I know we're all tired. I know we're all, all over the virtual learning, but we have to continue these conversations at home. Now that we're learning from home and from school, it's everyone's job to have ongoing, honest conversations about what is appropriate and how you should and should not treat people. If your child's being bullied, um, you can go to, or if you suspect that your child is being bullied, you can go to David's Legacy. Um, the Moloch family is a family that has fought really hard for cyberbullying legislation. You can go to their website and find out more information. You can report to your local law enforcement, and you can call us for help. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next month.